that you've looked at your data and you realize that parts of it are good and parts of it are bad, you're going to do some quality control uh, in the form of read trimming. Um, there's two uh, fairly broadly used uh, tools. There's many more as well. Uh, but two that I've tended to use a lot are the Fast X Toolkit and Trimomatic. Um, Fast, the Fast X Toolkit actually is a general package of utilities that does a lot of things, like convert to Fast Q files to Fast A files, full reverse complement things. Uh, there are particular parts of your sequencing that you want masked out with ends that will do that. Um, and uh, this is sort of more important in the earlier days of sequencing when people were doing their own custom uh, multiplexing of samples in a lane. Uh, it can also do sort of barcode splitting. Um, Chromomatic does most of the same things uh, because it is a sort of much more specific package just for doing trimming. Um, it has uh, the Illumina adapter sort of library built into it. So it has a mode where it'll go through and it'll look for things that it thinks are the Illumina adapters and trim them out. Uh, like uh, the FastX toolkit, you can trim a certain amount. Like if you know that even if you think there are some good sequences, you know, in that last 50 base pairs, uh, if you just want to play it safe and say, I want to get rid of all of that, just trim off all the ends, especially with those first 10 base pairs that I said are sometimes funky, you can just trim those off. It also has this mode where um, it has sort of a sliding window. And if you can either sort of trim based on the sliding window, uh, and both of these also just have a, um, based on parameters, just throw out the entire read. Don't even bother trimming, you know. Especially for that peak I showed you in the one where they're like mostly averaging the 20s. Most of those you probably don't want. Um, so these are two fairly useful tools. They're both command line tools, so you would um, use them at the command line for some sort of Unix or Linux system. Now we get into alignment and mapping. Um, so now that you have your reads, you've looked at them, you've trimmed them, uh, you want to know where your reads came from, right? In theory, you prepare the sample, and each read in that sample came from some location in the genome of the organism that you sequenced, and you want to know what that is. Now, some of you may be familiar with this program called BLAST. Um, it is pretty much workhorse of matching one sequence to another sequence. Uh, it's very good at what it does. Um, however, it has certain limitations. Um, in order for it uh, to find things, it basically has this sort of library of words, generally 11 words. Uh, it finds them, and then it sort of builds out matches from that core. Now, when you have a lot of short reads that you're trying to match to an entire genome, this tends not to be the best strategy. BLAST is also fairly computationally intense. Uh, it was really developed in the days where you just had a few things you had sequenced, and you were trying to find how they were similar to a few other things that you had sequenced. Um, the other problem is, is sort of the way it's designed, especially with these 11 mer core words, is not good for the world of sequencing. Um, First, there are sequencing errors. So, you know, even if your quality is up in the, you know, 30s range, you're still getting an error one in a thousand base pairs. So, each of your reads might have the occasional error in it. Um, and then there's the fact that some of the things that you're actually looking for, like you're looking for SNPs or you're looking for indels, uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to do the matching correctly. Um, and the indels, especially, are things that cause most. Uh, programs that are attempting to match one sequence to another, a lot of problems. So, oops, wrong direction. This is our goal. You have some reference sequence. You have a bunch of reads in this particular area of the reference sequence, and you want to know where each of these belongs. In this case, these are paired in reads. So this little red section here is what you read. The little red section on the other end is red. And this is sort of information that you don't currently have. It's part of the fragment, uh, but only these two parts were read. Now, this is the algorithm that is used by two of the programs that I'll talk about today, which is the burroughs wheeler transform. Uh, this is a data compression technique. Uh, technique. Uh, it works especially well with text strings. And what it basically does is it sort of finds it's very good at finding substrings 
and then ordering them in such a way that it's easy to sort of locate them. Um, and what you do is you basically sort of, in a some sense, compress your genome and have a very efficient index back into it. Um, sort of the best way to think, it, if you know much about compression, the whole idea behind compression is that you find things that are similar in your files and you sort of make them into a shorter notation and then you have like a reference telling you every time you have a shorter notation, it's actually this big more complex thing. So you can kind of imagine how that is useful for trying to match a bunch of really small short reads into your sort of index, which is actually a, a compressed version of your genome. Um, the first sort of, uh, this here, this lead paper is, is, is the main reference for uh, when they said, hey, this is something that we can use in order to do read alignment. And then uh, I'll talk a bit about BWA and Bowtie, which are current aligners that use the burroughs wheelers transform. You can see in their name, both of them, their names make a reference to burroughs wheeler BWA just said, we're just a burroughs wheeler aligner. And then the Bowtie people felt that they, you know, come up with a slightly more clever name. Um, here's just a, a quick sort of list and set of URLs for you to look at. Uh, the BWA aligner, uh, the Bowtie aligner. Um, SAM tools is something I'll talk in a little bit of detail. Uh, this is a tool that you use after you've aligned the data to do some basic manipulation. Uh, and then the BED tools, um, BED is a format that is used on the UCSC browser. Um, it's a fairly simple format. It's basically like chromosome location within the chromosome, like start, stop, uh, then like a value, and then a sort of extra list of other sort of values you can put in. Uh, bed tools is a pretty nice set of tools that will do, let you do a lot of things with these inter genome intervals, like find intersections, find unions, um, even find counts of how often things, you know, the particular base pair, how often a particular set of intervals has, has overlapped a particular set of, of base pairs within. Um, a reference, and so that the bed tool stuff will be a little bit more useful later in the talk when I talk about uh, peak finding. 